I'm glad you're with me tonight. We're gonna start with doing something really fun and you're gonna need your parents' help with this. So run, get them, and then we can get started. Okay, so what you're gonna need for this project is you're gonna need two cans, you're gonna need some string, scissors, a nail, and a hammer. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make can walkie-talkies. And you start by just turning your cans upside down. And with your nail, you are going to make a hole in the bottom of your can. Now this is why you probably need your parents' help because we don't want anybody to get hurt. Moms and dads, if you don't have a can opener that is um, takes the lid off, be sure that there's no rough edges around the can so your kids can't get hurt. Okay, so see I put a hole in the bottom of my can and then I'm gonna cut a long piece of string, which I've got a really long piece, but this is the end. And what you're gonna do is you're going to try to thread it through there. And it's kind of tricky, but if you get a big can like I did with this one, it's easier to reach up in there and get a hold of it. You pull that through and you make a couple of knots so that the string can't pull back through and pull it tight. And now you do that to the other end, which I've already done. And then to make the walkie talkie, you just hand one can to a person and then let them go off until it pulls tight. So your string is tight. And then you can talk in it and they can put their can up to their ear and hear what you're saying. And then when they're talking, you put the can to your ear while they're talking. That's how you make a can walkie-talkie. This isn't how we usually communicate with people, but it is a fun way to talk to our friends, isn't it? In our story Sunday, we learned that God communicated with someone in a very special way. Sunday, we talked about Hannah and Samuel and Eli. And when our story starts, Hannah doesn't have any children. And she prays and asks God to please send her a son. And she said, if you do, Lord, I will give him back to you and let him serve you his whole life. Well, God did give her a son, and Hannah named him Samuel. And when Samuel was very small, she took him to live at the temple with Eli the priest. And it was there at the temple that Samuel learned to love and serve God. Now, one night while he was at the temple sleeping, something very special and unusual happened. God spoke directly to Samuel. Only Samuel didn't know it was God at first. He thought it was Eli calling his name, so he ran to Eli. Now, after that happened three times, Samuel figured out, or I should say Eli figured out, it must be the Lord speaking and told Samuel, go back to your room and when the Lord calls again, tell him, speak, I am listening. That's what Samuel did. He heard God again and he listened to what he said. Now, even if God does not speak to us directly like he did Samuel, we have the opportunity to hear from God every day because we have God's words written down in his Bible. So every day that you listen to a story, you have the opportunity to hear and learn from God. So the problem isn't having access to God's word. It's do we make time for God's word? Do we listen to what he's telling us or do we get too busy to even take time to listen? I sure hope that you're taking time to listen. I challenged you all on Sunday to write down Bible stories that you read this week. So I'll know what you heard from God on next Sunday. But I also want you to challenge you to do what you hear. Not everyone who hears God's word does what it says. Remember Eli the priest had two sons? Now, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce their name, but I've always heard it is um, Hophni and Phinehas, I believe is how you say their names. Well, they grew up hearing the word of God, but they did not grow up doing the word of God. They chose not to do what God instructed them to do. The Bible calls them scoundrels. They did bad things, and as a result, God allowed them to be killed during one of the battles. Just because you hear God's word doesn't mean that you'll do it. 
that decision is going to be up to you, boys and girls. Will you be like Samuel and do what God wants you to do? Or will you be like Eli's two sons and ignore him? I pray that you'll be like Samuel, that you will always listen to God's word and that you will always do what he wants. Now, Sunday, we also started learning a new memory verse. It was from Jeremiah 10, verse 6. It said, let me read it to you. No one is like you, Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. What I'd like you to do tonight, after you make your walkie-talkie, can walkie-talkies, is to work on that verse, to say it to somebody else, or to teach it to somebody else. Maybe your mom, your dad, your little brother or sister. You can take all the time you need by just spreading out with your walkie-talkie, saying part of it, and then listening to see if they can repeat it back to you. If you do learn this verse, give me a call on my cell phone, my number's in the church directory, and say that verse to me. Love you guys and sure miss seeing you on Wednesday nights. Talk to you later. Bye.